Hello and welcome to my reInvent preview announcement wrap up of everything that they shoved out that didn't make it into the keynotes. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Honeycomb for sponsoring this ridiculous nonsense. If you have so much data you can't make sense of it, consider Honeycomb. I wish there was an integration with Honeycomb to sort through all of the ridiculous announcements that I'm about to inflict upon you, but sadly, they have not seen fit to bless us with one yet. I'm sure there'll be more to come in time for next year. We start here by looking at the AWS news blog about Proton supporting Terraform and Git repositories to manage things. That means that Proton realizes that absolutely nobody likes CloudFormation, especially the people working on CloudFormation. Jeff Barr did a wonderful thing here and mentioned that there's now a free tier data transfer expansion. Instead of five gigabytes, it's now a hundred gigabytes, which means you're still gonna get slapped silly by overages. It'll just take a little bit more work to get there. This is objectively a good thing, but I can see why they wouldn't want to talk about price cuts on stage when everyone's demanding the latest machine learning who's he what's it. And of course, Graviton2 support comes to Fargate. Yay, if you can run containers on top of something that's a little bit less ridiculous than the x86 instruction set, good for you, but who's really redoing all of their containers to support it? not as many as you would hope. And whatever the hell the cloud adoption framework is, the third version of it's now available, but I'm sure it's very important. And of course, there were some new Intel processors. And that's basically it. That's the blog post. Doesn't sound like much, right? Well, let's go over to the news feed and see what was released. I'm recording this after Thanksgiving, which means that they finally stopped and in a shocking display did not go about making people at AWS work on releases on Thanksgiving itself, we hope. Or if they did, they held them back until next week. Let's see, auto scaling, yeah, no one cares about that. Grafana does an integration between a thing between Athena and Redshift and other things. I think you're gonna see that that's a theme this year at reInvent where, because this thing that we've built can now talk to this other thing that we've built. You need that integration story, otherwise it turns into something actively ridiculous. Amazon QuickSight launches versioning and data sets, no one cares. The database migration service now can speak to another kind of SQL instance in a different cloud. Well, cloud, as your security story is still a joke, so I have a hard time considering it a real cloud right now. Amazon Connect is not my market and I don't care. IoT SiteWise does interesting stuff. The cloud can now eat your equipment, as I understand that. Ingest equipment data, no, it's gonna just eat your equipment, it's easier. QuickSight does something else that still makes it not great, so people aren't using it. Redshift has a geography data type, right? This one was interesting. We have the Enterprise on-ramp, which is considered enterprise support light. It's about a third as expensive to get started with, which is great because enterprise support costs $180,000 a year to get started with. So, okay, better, not terrific, but better. Redshift data sharing is now more performant. Huzzah. Here's the thing I really want to talk about. That's right. The NAT gateway is terrible, but it now speaks IPv6 and translates that to IPv4 still at four and a half cents per gigabyte, which seems awfully freaking dear to me. Route 53 now supports it as well, so good for it, but that's not quite as interesting. It's the NAT gateway that gets a new feature after all this time. That makes me at least pay attention to it. Don't get me wrong, it's still overpriced. It's still unpleasant. Don't love it. Python files from another notebook. Ooh, we can chain things together and charge you twice. Better echo reduction on the Amazon Chime SDK, not to be confused with Chime the app, which is terrible, but the SDK which powers it, which is decent. View the app as sort of a test bed for the technology. Private link support for Translate. I don't wanna know what the hell you're doing that makes that something you would ever care about. Please don't tell me. Oh, Proton lets you manage things in Git as opposed to what? Clicking around in the console? What the hell was it doing before? Great, it also supports Terraform. That's handy, I'll appreciate that. That's, that's something that people actually care about. Cool, DynamoDB now supports, wait, what? Hang on a minute. You're telling me that it didn't before? It's been their premier NoSQL database for ages. Now it's, oh, now it supports AWS backup. Right. Let's just move right along here. Elastic Fabric Adapter. Terrific, it supports new instance sizes. What kind? We don't really care. Well, we'll take a look briefly. Eh, yeah, okay. It works with the, uh, 
I see, additional sizes. But it doesn't tell you which ones, because why would it? I do not like the way that they dance around these things. Cool, you can share AMIs with organizations and organization unit, and the entire internet if you screw it up well enough. WAF adds support for CAPTCHA. Ooh, terrific. Now here's the real question, is it using their own CAPTCHA or ReCAPTCHA, which is owned by Google? I really think that ReCAPTCHA is a good example of Amazon historically using it embedded in things to demonstrate support to true multi-cloud. Good work. Fund your competition. Another DMS migration source. I'd like to point out we're still on the last day of releases. There's a fair bit more to go. Well, we're going to speed it up a bit. App Runner acknowledges that GitHub actually exists. Good for it. Redshift is now slower, got better with cold queries in China. Great, which means everything else did it in other regions months or years ago. Beanstalk now supports Graviton-based EC2 instance types, which is just what someone using Beanstalk wants to think about. Transcribe supports automatic language identification for streaming transcriptions. That's great. It automatically identifies my language as being salty. TensorFlow means I don't care about it. Time SDK live transcription now tells you what it's Doing. It's disturbing when the thing that is monitoring and doing the transcription stuff becomes more and more aware of the contextual meaning of what you're doing. That gets a little weird. Not saying it's bad, just that it's weird. Aqua for Redshift. That's like a crappy version of Chaos Search. Amazon Redshift launches. Yes, yes, yes. You can now migrate. Oh, this was actually interesting. It's not instances themselves, it's reserved instances. In other words, if you bought DS2 RIs, they will exchange them for RA3 instances. Are they trying to kill the old one or goose adoption of RA3? I don't know, I just find it interesting. Yes, AWS Single Sign-On, which wins Oxymoron of the Year award for just not being what it says on the tin. Great, one-click login to EC2 using Windows. Yes. Oh, hey, we have now transitioned to the day before. Yay, we've moved through a day. Let's see here. SQS encryption, great. Usability improvements in the navigation bar. That means you can search for my name and see the blog post that I was mentioned in once upon a time in the official blog. No support yet for my nonsense actually showing up natively in the console, but truly, it's just a matter of time as soon as I buy ads. ECS integrates with something else, terrific. Data tiering, yes, yes. You can make things less expensive by using cheaper SSDs as well as use storing data in memory. Fantastic. Yada, 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 as we continue on. Oh, that's right, S3 lifecycle. You can now save money at the cost of it being ever more complicated. Lovely. ALBs and NLBs now support IPv6 end to end. They really make it a big IPv6 push this year. Good, good, good. Fargate for ECS powered by, yes, we talked about that earlier in the blog post that we linked, because I only do blog posts for a few things. There are 40 distinct different blogs you can feed, but if it's not on the main news blog, it's not real. Data management APIs for FinSpace. Terrific. Basically a marketing wrapper around existing services targeting financial services clients. You can now use Systems Manager Fleet Manager, dumb name, good product, to provide console-based access to Windows nodes. Terrific. Terrific. Amazon Connect, I really don't care. You can now use IPv6 only subnets. I've spun it up. It was a little rough, I've got to say, because things like GitHub don't support IPv6 yet. This should goose some adoption. We hope. You can now have Amplify annoy the living hell out of you with notifications for in-app messaging. Good, good, good. I wonder when they're going to stop calling Amazon Open Search Service the successor to Amazon Elasticsearch Service. Given their marketing velocity, probably 2040. Cross-region data sharing. Yes, cross-account data sharing is usually configured by accident. Multi-AZ deployment. Oh, good. I'm still not sure anymore what the difference is between Aurora and not Aurora. Good for it. New version of Redis has been supported. Huzzah. Amplify does more things. It's not my market, so that's fine. Amazon Voice Focus is an Amazon machine image. It's a noise reduction thing you can now run on an EC2 instance. Sort of odd that that's how they're pitching it rather than, you know, as a service or something else, but okay. More proxy nonsense. You can attach and detach EBS volumes to Mac instance without rebooting them. That's kind of neat. You can now import CloudFormation stacks into a stack set. Good for it. Good for it. Amazon Linux Preview 2022. I have a blog post coming out later this week on that, so we'll tiptoe past this one for the moment. More region support. Now, hey, we've moved another day back to the 22nd. Graviton 2 nonsense. Yes, yes, yes. We keep looking at all of the interesting stuff and look for the gems in the dross. New version of Mac OS is supported on those Mac instances. Good for it. Storage lens metrics are great. Now you can look at the CloudWatch, which makes the experience terrible. New instance families that people have long stopped caring about. Yes, memory DB for Redis, a terrible Redis style database now supports nonsense, but there is a two month free trial, so you don't have to pay to figure out just how much it sucks. 
Lambda Insights now work with a different architecture, Graviton processor, the powered Lambda function. Why do I have to care so damn much about support of AWS services for their new processor architecture years after it was announced? Lovely. Elastic Fleets. Ridiculous name. No one knows what it means. A serverless fleet type. Great. So AppStream 2.0 can now be used serverlessly? Yes, that's how you should be talking about it, but you're just not. We're going to keep on skipping through because this is ideally a list of interesting things that came out, not boring things. As we continue to look, my God, who does this? See, what I don't get is that you have reInvent. It's coming. You're trying to launch big things. You're trying to hit the big announcements and hopefully get it on stage. So you, you still sneak out nonsense like, ooh, you remember now supporting another region for this service that most people don't know exists. It's why, why can you not drop things like this other weeks? But here we are. Recognition finds new ways to be problematic. I am just assuming without reading that paragraph solely because that's what recognition does. It makes things actively worse. There's a dashboard in the audit manager. Good for it. Aurora, new version of my squeal. Good for it. S3 on Outpost now works the same way that the consistency wise that normal S3 does. The bigger story, in fact, is that until this, it didn't. I bet that's a surprise to somebody. IAM has decided to begrudgingly tell you why it's not letting you do things. That's valuable. And so on and so forth. Bottle Rocket, which is an open source project, is now available in GovCloud. Right. Yeah, that's not an AWS service, but somehow now it's available in GovCloud. Right then. Cognito sucks, but the new console experience sucks less. Monotron launches web app. We've talked about this in previous week's newsletters and so on and so on. And now we're just into a bunch of random, ridiculous nonsense. Hopefully the things that they announce at reInvent are more entertaining. I'd like to once again thank Honeycomb for supporting this and helping me filter the nonsense into something ideally more entertaining and hopefully just a smidgen more enjoyable than the typical blog scroll nonsense that they inflict upon us. I'll talk to you next from Las Vegas. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And thank you for tolerating and empowering my ridiculous nonsense.